Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. In this video, we're going to show you how to build the FT Easy Battle Blimp. The FT Easy Battle Blimp was specifically designed to give you an ultimate indoor experience for both new pilots and also experienced. We want to develop a design that basically gives you the ability to fly in very small areas and also really provides a great educational experience for all of our friends in FT STEM. The FT Battle Blimp is simply built around an 18 inch balloon, or you can upgrade to our Mylar FT Easy Rocket Blimp. The benefits of the Rocket Blimp is it not only gives you a little bit more speed, but it also is latex free. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video here, we have two different types of power packs. If you're new to the hobby and you want to be able to fly not only the Easy Battle Blimp, but also over 20 other different designs, feel free to get this two channel Easy Power Pack. This is going to give you everything you need from your transmitter, your battery, your battery charger, motors, flight control board, everything. If you already have one of these and you have a transmitter or you have our pocket transmitter that actually will speak to the same protocol that flies these planes, you can simply buy our Easy Power add-on. Now this isn't going to give you the charger or the transmitter, but it is going to give you everything else you need. And then all you simply need to do is use your existing charger or your pocket transmitter or the one that comes in the power pack. This is a really great solution for those who have school or STEM programs that maybe they want a one-to-one -one student ratio, but they don't need a transmitter for every kid because they're only flying a few at a time. I'm not going to worry about opening up this guy right here. I'm actually going to go ahead and use my pocket transmitter so we can show you how to do that and the easy power add-on. The only other thing I'm going to add to this because it's so much fun is our optional LED light strips. Now you get two light strips in this kit, but you only need one. I'm going to show you how to put it onto your gondola so that way you have a custom lighted experience. And the nice thing is this goes on the gondola, which means you can change it from balloon to balloon, even if you accidentally pop it while you're doing battle. Let's go ahead and put our electronics aside and our transmitter aside. And we'll also put the fins aside and we'll focus completely on our little gondola here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to package all of our electronics and we're going to start installing them. Right here in front of me, you see all the basics of what we need to basically put on the gondola, minus our little LED strip, which we're going to put on last. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fasten our little tiny control board onto our gondola. Now you're going to notice that there's a little top and a little bottom hole. This is going to give us the ability to zip tie the control board onto the gondola, which means it's going to be easily removable. This is specifically for our friends who are doing STEM programs or youth programs that want to be able to take these electronics off and switch them to other platforms later. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pass our zip tie through and we're going to tighten it down. It doesn't have to be overly tight, we just don't want it to move very easily. And if you want to protect your antenna from getting knocked off from takeoffs and landings, all we're going to do is just pass it through this bottom hole and that's going to make our antenna kind of bend sideways. And that way as it rubs up against the ground, you're not going to snag it and fatigue. It's important when we zip tie on our flight control board that we make sure that our battery lead is pointing forward. The easiest way to make sure it's pointing forward is by looking for the openings of where our motors are going to go and to make sure the lead is pointing towards the same direction. Now for the orientation of our motors, we're going to make sure that we have our lefts and our rights proper. The easiest way to tell the left and the right side is if you're sitting inside the blimp and you're flying forwards. So we're turning this away from me right now. You can see my open ends where the propellers are going to be are facing away. And at that point, we can have our left on the left side and our right on the right side. Now before we install our motors, we're going to go ahead and install our props. It's easier to do this now than later. For our blue motor, since this is an attractor configuration, we're going to find the propeller that has a little B marking on it. You're going to notice your B right by the tiny little round part on your propeller. For a tractor configuration where the plane is getting pulled through the air instead of pushed through the air, we're going to make sure that the round little nub on our propeller is facing towards the motor. The easiest way to do this is to support the back of our motor on the side of the table. We're going to find the little dot that is open and with simple direct pressure, we're going to press it down into place. It's important that when we press these props into place that we make sure we don't push them all the way against the motor where it's bound up. We want to make sure it spins nice and free. Let's go ahead and do the same process on the other side on our left motor. Again, we're going to take this little round nub and that's going to be facing towards the motor. We're going to hold it down. We're going to line up a little tiny opening with a little bit of pressure. We're going to press it into place. And there we go. A real convenient way to install these before we push them in is to give this two loops here, one and two. This is going to be able to hide a lot of our wire inside the holder. And it's also going to give us the ability to give us a little bit of friction that we want so the motors don't easily pop out without any glue. All I got to do is simply pull this through. And we're going to carefully slide this in. 
Notice I'm taking my time to make sure I'm not cutting or pushing any of the wire in a weird way. And there's one side. Let's do the same thing on the other. So now that we have both of our motors pressed in, our next step here is to go ahead and guide our wires through here and then ultimately plug them on our right connectors. So you're gonna notice that we have a red connector and we have a white connector. We're gonna plug these into the corresponding ports. So the connector that's painted red here will go red. The connector that's painted white will go white. You wanna get really fancy. You can even wind these in through the lattice to really kind of clean this whole look up and make it real nice. I have the one lace through, go plug it in. Same thing on the other side, just go ahead and lace it through. And there we go. Now at this point, all of our motors and all of our electronics are hooked up. We could actually tape this to a balloon and go ahead and fly it and enjoy it. But you may notice that there's two white ports here and those two white ports actually tie directly to our LED lights. Now you can choose to put both strands of lights on this or just one. In the videos that you're watching, we're actually only flying with one strand of lights on just to save some weight. It's completely up to you how you do this. But in this part, I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how we tape this on. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pick one of our ports here and we're gonna plug this in. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the one that's closest to it. There we go. And you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of sticky back tape on this. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the sticky back tape off and we're gonna go ahead and tape this down. An easy way to kind of consolidate a lot of this is just to kind of wind this up as we get closer and closer to the very top here. Once we've gotten close enough to the very top, can go ahead and put our lights starting right on the center and we want to kind of time our bend or our positioning of this so we don't bend it right on an LED light and damage it. So we're going to have four LED lights on the bottom on one side and three on the bottom of the other side. If we bring this around right over all the way and we can even bring it right around and stick it to itself. And just as simple as that we have it all on. Now there's something that's really important here. We don't want to put this directly on a balloon because you can see that these are actually quite sharp. If we put it on a balloon now, there's a good risk that we'll pop it. So for that reason, we're going to go over with a simple piece of clear tape and we're going to put a piece of clear tape all around this. So no matter how we attach it to the balloon, it will not pop it. All we simply need is some basic scotch tape, three quarter inch, half inch, whatever you, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to start on the bottom. Work right across the top. There we go. And then right back down to the bottom. At this point, our gondola is on. Let's go ahead and grab a battery, power it up, and make sure that our gyros and our motors are all working properly, and also that we can turn on our lights. Now for our little tiny batter here, all we simply need to do is slide it right in its battery holder. You're gonna see that it's a friction fit, so it's not gonna pop loose. And for my pocket radio, I wanna make sure that I have easy plane selected. If I don't have easy plane selected, it simply will not bind to this plane. Now, if you've never bound your pocket radio to one of these easies, we have a really good video for that. It's actually linked down in the link below. All right, at this point, my transmitter's turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. And what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a rapid flashing red light on the very bottom here. Now all we simply need to do with our pocket radio is we need to turn this on. Welcome to HTX. Lights on high rate. You notice the lights turn on and once this light turns solid, we now have a bind. I can go ahead and take this and I can give it throttle. I can turn my lights, lights on. Off. Lights on. And I can also go low rate, low rate and high rates. High rate. Now the important thing is, is when I give this throttle, what I should feel is I should feel thrust wanting to pull it forward. And when I rock it back and forth, I should feel resistance on both sides. If I rock it and it only wants to help me with that direction, my connectors are probably reversed and we need to change that. So this is our FT Easy rocket balloon here. This is a great solution. If you want a little bit faster experience, you want it to look just like a uh, rocket ship flying through the air. And also you don't want to mess with any kind of fins here. Uh, this is also good for people that may have latex allergies that can't handle balloons. This is safe to handle. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little piece of tape on the bottom here. You can also take something like a little clamp or whatever you want to be able to keep it from floating to the ceiling. 
One other really cool thing about these Mylar rocket balloons is they don't lose helium over time like latex does. If you're going to be using a lot of latex balloons and you want it to last the longest, you can actually get a special gel that goes inside before you fill it up or take your balloon to a party store, pay them to have it fill up and put that gel in. It can last up to four months if you don't pop it. So now that we have our gondola here, the placement is really important. The most important thing about mounting your gondola to our rocket balloon is you don't want to mount it where the fins aren't vertical and horizontal. In other words, if the fins are going 45 degrees from each other, the blimp simply will not turn. You're going to notice that there's two printed ports on the front here. The position where we want to mount our gondola is actually going to be taking the difference right between that you see here and here. So if you're going to line up on the rear of the port and then guide it over to the middle. This is a really good starting point. From that point on, you can tape it and move it forward or backwards, depending on if you want to fly a little more nose high and slower or a little bit more nose down and faster. So to prep this, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thicker tape. I'm gonna pull about four inches and to make it easy to take it off and on, I'm just gonna fold over about a quarter of an inch on the very end. I can now take this and I can simply slide this right on one side of my gondola. And I'm gonna do the same process on the other side. Take about four inches of tape here. We're going to just fold over the very edge. And we're going to tape this on. There we go. Again, we kind of practice our placement. We're going to split the difference on the back part of this port. We're going to go right over to our center seam. And the nice thing is, is, you can kind of see with these wrinkles, they pull a perfect perpendicular line that we can line up on. And we're simply gonna tape that down. <laughs> and for positioning, we wanna make sure that our gondola is mounted directly over the seam, and that it's also perpendicular seam or parallel with these printed lines. You're gonna notice at this point, it's now heavier than air, so you don't have to worry about it flying away. At this point, we're ready to take this out for its very first flight and see how it does. But before we do that, we're going to show you how to mount the exact same gondola on the included 18 inch white latex balloon. Now we just showed you how to take the FTEZ Battle Blimp gondola and put it on the rocket balloon. Our next step here is we're going to show you how to basically mount the fins to our latex balloon that we included with the kit. This is an 18 inch latex balloon and we have two different fin options and we did this for a very special reason. Not all balloons are the same. Some have more of a uh, oval shape, an egg shape like what you see here. Other ones kind of protrude down and they kind of look like a bubble and it kind of tapers and then flares out a little bit. We gave you two different fin options to basically give you the best opportunity to be able to fit either of those 18 inch balloons, whether you use ours or whether you use someone else's. Now for the more egg shaped round balloon here, we're gonna use the round balloon fins that you see here. If you have a balloon that is more like elliptical, I don't know how to describe it, but has more of a, a tail on it, you're gonna use the retro fins that I have here on my right. So the first thing we do before we mount the gondola is we're going to go ahead and prepare our fins. We're going to tape them on. And at that point, we can tape on our gondola and go fly. You're going to notice that you have three tabs here. The first two tabs, we're going to go ahead and bend straight down. And this is going to give us a little flange so that we can tape onto the balloon. Now, the easiest thing to do with our balloons is just to take a clamp or a string. And you can see that when I hold this up, it's pretty flush. We put a lot of heart into making sure the balloons we give you guys are gonna fit real nicely. But if it doesn't fit perfectly, it's very easy to kind of extend one of these tabs or kind of stretch it to the balloon. And don't worry if there's a little gap in between the balloon, it won't hurt a thing. Next, we're gonna take three pieces of tape here and we're gonna put that tape right on the bottom of our tabs so we can tape on our fins. There's one, there's two, and finally, there's three. Easiest way to put this on is we're gonna go ahead and start from the very back edge. And we're just gonna go ahead and put on our trailing edge here. And then we're gonna stretch this out as straight as possible. Tape on the front. And finally, tape on the top. You can always go back with a little bit more tape or you can untape this and adjust it. There's one side. Now let's go ahead and do the same process on the other side. Again, I'm gonna pull two tabs down and one tab up. And these 
these fins are kind of a guide. You can change the shape of these to get different uh, characteristics. And if you choose to go with a smaller or bigger balloon, you may find that you need to actually change the way they uh, are shaped completely to make it fly. We really like the experience that the 18 inch balloon gave you, especially indoors, and also the way it lit up and you're able to really control it. So we chose to make these fins specifically for the 18 inch. At this point, I can just kind of hug my balloon here. Tight right down the edge. Lift this up, make it nice and flat. There we are. And when I look away from it, what I should see is a nice flash surface going right across. If for any reason you have one fin going horizontal and the other fin angled up or down, go ahead and untape it and adjust it until you see it flat across the balloon, just like this. And just like before, you can see that we have our gondola prepared with our tape. This is actually just taken off and removed from the blimp. The nice thing is, is you can remove this and stick it right back on anytime you want. You're going to notice that there's a round of the balloon here. I'll just turn the sideways so you can see right here. The position that we're going to want to start with is going to be basically at the lowest portion just forward. So we're going to kind of look at the balloon and right where it drops to its lowest position, we're then going to go up just a little bit from that and that's where we're going to stick it down. Try to keep this nice and straight. And that looks like a really great starting position right there. You can see that we're basically, we're at the lowest portion of the balloon, just a little bit forward, and that's exactly where we want it. Now again, if you want a faster experience, you can move it forward a little bit. If you want a slower experience, you can move it back. You can even slide your battery in and out to kind of do some minute adjustments. It's a great way of trimming up your blimp. But at this point, let's go ahead and power it on, make sure our lights and everything work, and then we'll take it out for a flight. Same thing that we did before here. My radio is already pre-selected and powered off, but it's on the FTEZ plane. We're going to go ahead and power on our battle balloon first. We have a rapid flash red light. And now we're going to go ahead. Welcome to HTX. Low rate. Lights on. And there we go. We're solid. <laughs> Let's go to high rate. Now at this point, our FTEZ Battle Blimp is ready for its first maiden. Now there's a couple things that you want to know about the FTEZ Battle Blimp. Number one, don't ever plan on taking it outside to fly unless you have absolute dead calm wind. One unfortunate reality of this is because this is a balloon, and even though it does have a little bit of weight to it, it'll blow away very, very easily. So be very cautious about ever taking it outside to fly it. Number two, this flies under thrust vectoring, which means about half throttle, you should be maintaining altitude. Over half throttle, you're gonna climb in less than half throttle, you're going to descend. Always make sure that you maintain at least 10% of throttle and not chop the throttle completely until you're just about ready to touch down. These FTEZ control boards have an anti-spin feature, which makes aerobatics possible, which is so cool. But also, if you try to glide it in and control it left and right, you will go into that anti-spin feature. So always make sure that you maintain just a little bit of throttle when you're flying it around. One thing that we're confident of is that the FTEZ Battle Blimp is not only a great way to get into the hobby, but it's also a great way to enjoy time and flying with your friends and your families while you're indoors. This is going to be a really great solution on those cold winter days, but also in a classroom near you where you want to be able to take flight in a controlled environment right in your own gymnasium. Thanks so much for being part of the Flight Test family, and we'll see you next time.